Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, as we reflect on the one-year anniversary of Putin's war against Ukraine, it cannot help but remind us of why we fought in the Second World War and that the fight Ukraine embodies the very same principles we fought for in the Second World War. First, preventing authoritarian regimes from wiping out sovereign democratic countries. Ukraine is a sovereign democratic nation. They have held free and fair elections since 1991. They have freedom of expression, press, and speech. While Russia is an autocratic nation led by an authoritarian dictator, who represses personal expression, the free press, and free speech. He invaded Ukraine expressly to expand his sphere of autocratic control and subvert the will of the free people of Ukraine. The second principle, to prevent further genocide. Putin's invasion has been characterized by the commission of war crimes. One year ago this month, Russian forces deliberately targeted a civilian shelter. That same month, they struck a children's hospital and maternity ward. The next month, over 400 bodies of civilians were found in mass graves in Bucha after the city was liberated. And in September, 450 bodies, mostly of civilians, were found in mass graves in Kharkiv. I visited Ukraine last summer, where I met with President Zelensky and traveled to Bucha and saw the mass graves firsthand. In the Second World War, we vowed never again. Removing ourselves from this effort would be an egregious breach of that commitment and would demonstrate that we have not learned the lessons of those who gave their last full measure of devotion in the Second World War. The third principle we defended in World War II was the preservation of a liberal world democratic order. As we have seen in history, the actions of one autocratic nation can inspire the actions of others. Allowing Russia to conquer Ukraine will send the message to other autocrats that their expansion to free nations will not be opposed. This cannot be the future we allow. President Biden's recent historic trip to Kyiv highlighted these reasons, but it also recalled the words of FDR in his last inaugural in the months leading up to the end of that great conflict. He said, we have learned that we cannot live alone at peace and that our well-being is dependent on the well-being of other nations far away. We have learned the simple truth, as Emerson said, that the only way to have a friend is to be one. We can gain no lasting peace if we approach it with suspicion and mistrust or with fear. Just as the world has borne witness to Putin's relentless violence, we have seen the resilience and determination of the Ukrainian people. Their fight is the reason we formed the United Nations and NATO in the first place. Quite simply, they have earned that support. As President Zelensky said, aid is not charity, it's an investment in the global security and democracy. He is right. Our efforts to defend Ukraine are to protect Ukraine's right to self-determination and protect the future of democracy around the globe. We are indeed facing a turning point in this war, and I am reminded of Winston Churchill's words after Britain's victory in the Second Battle of Al Alamein. Now this is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps the end of the beginning. We are today at the end of the beginning of Putin's campaign in Ukraine and his efforts to recreate the Soviet Union. We must be united in our efforts to defend Ukraine and democracy. I yield back.